Hello and welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s animated X-Men show, Season 3, Episodes 8 and 9, No Mutant is an Island, and Obsession. So, another two episodes I absolutely loved. Spoilers for these two episodes and the ones leading up to them. And, uh, yeah, in the comments, at uh, the description box, there is a link to donate to the sag after Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important strike. There's also videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's dive in, starting with No Mutant is an Island. So, yeah, this episode has a different intro. I think the very next episode has the, the usual one, and I think it's also... I believe this is... This has been changed in the from the original airing order because when I went to IMDb, it's you know yeah Disney Plus is is showing them slightly out of order, and I think it's because originally they were maybe aired somewhat chronologically out of order or some something like that. And let's see, or maybe to group. Phoenix episodes together. Uh, anyway, and yeah, Jubilee is basically the only person who refuses to accept that Jean is dead. And you know, th this was back when you know t today, the take has pointed out that we're starting to see YouTuber the take uh, that we're starting to see grief in a more complex light. Back then, it was basically everyone thought all grief uses the the. I'm gonna say there's like five stages. So, you know, going by that, Jubilee is stuck in the the. Oh wow, I I thought I had it. Hold on, five stages of grief. Denial. She's stuck in denial. And, you know, Cyclops is in anger. The rest of them are in depression. Xavier's maybe already in acceptance. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, Cyclops actually quits the X-Men because of his grief. Let's see. And the uh, yeah the the you know he says I'm not gonna need you know I won't be needing this anymore and he throws the the uniform to to the ground which I suppose could be interpreted as him agreeing with his live action counterpart when we first met him he does not want to be wear wearing yellow spandex. And, yeah, so he takes the bus, and the kid there hates mutants, and his mother doesn't say, I'm sorry he hates mutants. She says, you know, I'm sure this man does not want to be called a mutant, which, ah, oh, wow. And, you know, it's a great, because, like, you know, kids p pretend that, you know, they're good guys fighting bad guys all the time. And it actually reminds me of, like, cowboys and, and Indian, or Native Americans, you know, the, this, idea, this outdated idea that, you know, first of all, that it's quite that simple, that there's just good guys and bad guys, which the show does a lot to, to help combat that idea. The, you know, the characters who choose evil on the show are doing so for complex reasons. And also just this idea that the other is, you know, the bad guy, which, you know, today we, you know, when you look at all the information, it's clear that white settlers did a lot of truly evil things. And honestly, the Native Americans were just trying to get by. Like, it was the white settlers who started the, the conflict. Let's see... Yeah, and we get some some flashbacks and you know, get get some more information about Cyclops's 
you know younger years which I quite appreciate and we get the the point that when it comes to adoption the easy children are more likely to be adopted than ones with special needs and this is extremely important like you're really you know if you you know I understand if you if you feel you can't but if you are in a position where you want you know to 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 raise a, a another you know one or more children for for the next generation if at all possible try to adopt and try to adopt someone thought of as difficult and see if you can't do the the best you know be what they need you to be you know and yeah we meet rusty who you know he he started the fire by accident and it's actually a great you know kind of he works really well as a uh, what's the word it's not metaphor it's like they're they're rusty is where cyclops was you know both of them when they were younger they couldn't control their powers so they accidentally broke stuff and rusty explains you know he doesn't want, want to go back to mister killrave i totally had forgotten that we got purple man on here and yeah obviously you know it's not the the voice acting here is good it's not quite david tennant but let's not you know that's that's a really really high standard but yeah very very cool to to see and i believe i think in the comics he is a mutant Let's see. Hmm. Oh, okay. This set. Uh, uh, let's see. Um. Hmm. Oh, maybe not. And actually, to come to think of it, I get. I'm not entirely sure. I forget if they say he's a mutant or not. And. You know, it's okay. It, it wouldn't be the first time, <coughs> like in the movies, <coughs> in a lot of the live-action movies, they seem fairly insistent that there's humans and and or you know non-mutant humans and mutants and nothing in. You know, I've always thought it was a letdown that, like, in X-Men Two, they have Yuriko, they have Lady Deathstrike. They have this thing of oh you know you know weird military scientific experiments, just make her a cyborg like in the comics like it's so you don't it doesn't have to be um you know or at the very least have her be like a combination of born mutant and also cyborg anyway. But yeah, um, and you know Rusty says he you know he has a torture chamber in his basement and he says you know I've only known you for a few days but I already love you like a son which you know considering I, f I forget if it's the same in the comics but in Jessica Jones the the Marvel Netflix show we do hear his childhood was awful like monstrous you know so the the yeah you know if Kilgrave love if Kilgrave loves you as a son, that's not necessarily a, a good thing. That might mean he wants to abuse you, the way he was abused as a child. And at first, I was like, "Are they are they not gonna give us the purple skin?" But no, it's just you know he he covers it with makeup, but he does actually. You know, I don't blame Jessica Jones, the Marvel Netflix show, for not having David Tennant in, in purple with purple skin. You know, instead he like wears purple suits. But yeah. You know, this show can get away with the, the kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, so Kilgrave's team attacks the the governor and really great with the representation. One of the kids is disabled and that that actually is his superpower. You know, he he can transform his 
you know, the the chair into, it's, yeah. So that's that's really cool. And yeah, we we finally got a Cyclops centric episode. At at this point, they have really thoroughly explored every single uh, team member of the of the X Men of of the of the show, which is accurate to when the comics were also you know yeah the comics of the of the nineties and. And that's of course, you know, the makeup is of course why Kilgrave wears those black gloves all the time. Let's see, you know, if if he put make, well, I guess not all makeup would, but some makeup might smear, and that's gonna, you know, yeah, people are gonna notice if his fingers are suddenly purple. And yeah, we were told, you know, this is the final part of the training, so it's like, okay, gotta you know, has to has to stop that. Cyclops has to stop that. And you know, Cyclops points out acceptance is earned, not forced. You know, and the you know, considering that earlier in the episode you know, yeah, basically he had an arc, you know, earlier in the episode, he, it seemed like, you know, acceptance, like it, it didn't, it's, you know, er, it certainly, he was very frustrated about the state of, of mutant acceptance. And we see that, you know, Sarah actually accepted Cyclops from when they were children, knowing that he was mutant, and the, the, you know, basically it was because they were already friends. She already thought of him as a friend. And, yeah, you know, often that is how it, it is. Like, a lot of people who might not be open to, to people who are different from them, if they know someone in person that they trust, that can, yeah. Let's see. And and Cerebro's auto detection system has found Gene, and that brings us to Obsession, where yeah, Archangel is searching for Apocalypse, and yeah, we have an obsessed rich man who's abusing workers because of how much he believes in his cause. So yeah, Elon Musk or you know. I don't know if Zuckerberg believes in the cause, but whatever, you know, some something along, or Jeff Bezos, some something along the, yeah. And, yeah, we see Apocalypse make himself really, really big, the biggest we've seen him so far on the show, love to see it, and... And Apocalypse thinks that it wasn't wrong to turn Warren into a slave because he is a powerful slave. And, and I know that this is, is not the first time Apocalypse expresses that on the show, but it is truly a fascinating... And, and there are people who say... You know, there, there are some powerful people who say, your life is better... Th you know, that's actually... That's a common refrain when conservatives, you know try to defend slavery as if there's any way to it's it's abs the idea that it was ever ethical it's completely absurd but they something they will say is their lives as slaves in America are better than they were back in Africa you know and it's just so so again you know i i'd like to think this episode maybe primed some kids to reject that idea you know, at least you know when when someone says something like that to you, you know, at the very least, look at like sources, Ch check what the you know, because if you know very much, it's it's a completely absurd statement. Even if you want to say, oh, you know, they were trying to make well, if they were trying to make things better for them, they wouldn't have beaten them, separated families, raped them, you know. Now. 
Right, and there are mutant there, there are mutants fighting each other on Liberty Island, which I guess this might have been one of the episodes that helped serve as inspiration for at least one of the live action movies. And yeah, you know, Rogue helps Warren, you know, you can really understand why. And, you know, and she does, by the end of the episode, admit, you know, she got caught up in this obsession herself. And, you know, and, it, yeah, I feel the, the episode does a good job exploring this. Because, yeah, the, the you know, a good cause can lead to an obsession. And obsessions don't tend to, you know... It, like obsession is basically like being being on a on a train that's headed for a train wreck you know you can you can try to get off in time or you can stay there until disaster happens but it's never going to end well you know unless you stop that's the only possible way to end it i like that the ship likes beast and there's actually there's a friendship to where beast you know, sheds some tears over losing her, and it is also this thing of, you know, there's, he's not often around a lot of people, a lot of entities that are really, really smart and really appreciate him, you know, we've seen that, like, even other doctors are like, you know, I mean, he's good at what he does, but he's still a mutant kind of thing, and, yeah, they, they, set up a trap and Wolverine really hates being the the guinea pig which we can understand why it's probably making him think of certain situations he's actually been in where it wasn't just a, a test of a yeah and but but yeah apocalypse you know knew they were going to use the ship and set up a, a trap that the the ship itself can't, you know, can't turn it off, but ultimately she does, since since the ship has a female voice, I'm going to be using female gender pronouns, she ultimately does realize how she can guide the X-Men on the ship to, to prevent, yeah. And they do seemingly manage to capture... Apocalypse and and the ship says I I believe the you know what I'm feeling right now would be denoted as satisfaction which yeah and but but yeah you know Apocalypse does manage to escape really really cool line about you know do you know how many peoples have tried to destroy me you are no closer then the was it the the Babylonians with their swords and their fire sticks? I know I've heard that before. Was that did they end up using that in the movie? Um, Babylonians with their swords and their fire. No, I guess it is. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's yeah. I am as far beyond mutants as they are beyond you. No, it is it is just from this show, but it's so frequently yeah, it's because I've in the in the many years Yeah, in in the many years since the last time I watched the show, I've come across like articles and such that quote and I think this was the most recent yeah, th this is a place that I saw, for example, when the, yeah, there's there's this 2018 article where someone wrote, Fox were no closer to getting a apocalypse right than the Babylonians were with their swords and fire sticks. So that, I, I read that after X-Men Apocalypse came out, and that's why it sounds so familiar. And yeah, and and Apocalypse says there is no freedom from me, 
only through me. And, you know, I talk a lot about, especially when, when covering, like, Star Wars, you know, the, the gradual rise of fascism is one of the biggest threats we're facing today in the West. And, yeah, that's, you know, that quote is, is really a, a great way of expressing fascist thinking. You know, if you're if you're doing a kid show and you want to warn kids about fascism, make the villain fascist. And I, I know I said before, you know, the villains, most of the villains on the show are are complex, but Apocalypse is perhaps not the most. He's fairly straightforwardly evil. We still haven't gotten his backstory. I, I but he is still alive by the end of this episode, so I'm hoping. They will do. You know, th this one does tell us that he's been around for a really long time, which I don't think the earlier episodes really made completely clear. Now, but but yeah, you know, the the ship tries to stop Apocalypse, but also like becomes a, a problem for the X Men. And Apocalypse goes, you know, I shall return. And, yeah, Warren says, I won't stop until Apocalypse is destroyed, or I am. You know, and that is, yeah, the, the, um, that's obsession in a nutshell. You know, I will achieve my goals or destroy myself in the process. And yeah, um, another two excellent episodes. I suppose I'm not sure I have much more to say. It's kind of for the last several episodes, it's been multi part arcs. So it was interesting to see. I forget. I know that. Okay, yeah, I'm. I think the next two episodes are maybe not one arc, but after that there are several arcs in a row. So, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate that part of defeating Kilgrave was using the press, you know, filming him saying something awful, you know. Yeah, the 90s were, or maybe just seem now, a more innocent time. The The idea that someone's political career could be destroyed by having them on camera saying something monstrous. But I suppose it does still sometimes happen, just not always. And I suppose that... Yeah, and yeah, with the with Kilgrave, we again see some of the villains try to make slaves of mutants, which is a bit of a running theme on this show. You know, Apocalypse did it. Leader, I think he wanted to be called, did it. Kilgrave, you know, there's a sinister. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of villains on the show that try to make slaves. So that's it has a very clear, staunch anti-slavery message, which I greatly appreciate. And, uh, you know, today we're seeing Republicans rewriting, you know, they always talk about, oh, you know, the left want to rewrite history. No, that's what you guys do. You know, saying, oh, they, were, they weren't they were slaves. They were, they were just immigrants looking for work, which doesn't go that far in explaining why a number of them literally drowned themselves jumping from the ships instead of going with that doesn't sound like something that you would intentionally do that again that is something conservative politics are doing to immigrants today drowning them anyway you know the the 
some of the villains on the show are powerful people who would rather see mutants as slaves than you know a, a peaceful coexistence and that is again something you know sometimes you'll you'll get people who say you know okay fine we can we can live with this other group of people but we have to subjugate them and that again is something that yeah you know that's wrong that's ethically indefensible I think that's everything that I had to say about these, but yeah, um, right. I I uh, I put what well, you know. I've I've been including the links about the the SAG after strike for a, a while now. I just put um, you know, yeah. Just just today, a new video hit YouTube. I'm going to get the title real quick. It's called The Current State of Hollywood, A Rant by Cold Crash Pictures. And it is now the the top link. It's directly under the link to donate. So even if you've watched the other videos that I've linked in there, you know, note that there is now a brand new one. If, if you're not s yourself subscribed to Cold Crash Pictures, which... I recommend excellent content. Yes, that is it for this one. So, catching in tomorrow, make mine marvel.